viewers. Welcome back to another Healthy Lifestyle Supports Channels video. Based on the coronavirus update number 71 of the World Health Organization, WHO, on 16 December 2021. Update on end of year celebrations during COVID-19. The latest on the COVID-19 global situation and guidance on mass gatherings. As current global situation, cases reported to the World Health Organization, WHO. Globally, as of 5.14 p.m. set, 19 December 2021, there have been 274,554,204 confirmed cases of COVID-19, including 5,367,089 deaths. As of 19 December 2021, 56.8% of the world population has received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. 8.67 billion doses have been administered globally, and 35.99 million are now administered each day. Only 7.6% of people in low-income countries have received at least one dose. Celebrating the end of year safely. In many parts of the world, the end of the year and beginning of the new year are a time of celebrations. Family and friends attend small private gatherings, large public events, and sometimes travel long distances to celebrate together. As Omicron has been designated a variant of concern, there are several actions WHO recommends countries to undertake, including enhancing surveillance and sequencing of cases, particularly during celebrating the end of year 2021. Number 1. SARS-CoV-2 can spread during any size of gathering. Oh, now let me verify a bit on SARS-CoV-2. It's announced severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2 as the name of the new virus on 11 February 2020. This name was chosen because the virus is genetically related to the coronavirus responsible for the SARS outbreak of 2003. While related, the two viruses are different. SARS is an airborne virus, and can spread through small droplets of saliva in a similar way to the cold and influenza. It was the first severe and readily transmissible new disease to emerge in the 21st century, and showed a clear capacity to spread along the routes of international air travel. SARS can also be spread indirectly via surfaces that have been touched by someone who is infected with the virus. Most patients identified with SARS were previously healthy adults aged 25 to 70 years. A few suspected cases of SARS have been reported among children under 15 years. The case fatality among persons with illness meeting the current WHO case definition for probable and suspected cases of SARS is around 3%. Well, why SARS-CoV-2 can spread during any size of gathering? WHO has found the following. 1. Evidence has shown that the risk of transmission of SARS-CoV-2 does not correlate with the size of a gathering. 2. Therefore, attendees need to exert caution at any gathering including private family parties and other end-of-year celebrations. And 3. To avoid increased SARS-CoV-2 transmission during end-of-year celebrations, it is imperative to observe the holiday with caution and care. Number 2. A risk-based approach for safe gatherings. WHO recommends that the decision-making process of holding, modifying, postponing or cancelling gatherings of any type or size should rely on a risk-based approach as following cyclical process. Risk assessment. One risk evaluation. Two risk mitigation. And three risk communication. With a cyclical process as a recording and reporting. Communication and consultation. And monitoring and review. This involves evaluating the risk based on the local context, deciding actions to mitigate the risk, and communicating those. Please see WHO, Mass Gathering COVID-19 Risk Assessment Tool. Individuals and communities should manage the health risk in their daily lives, and adapt to COVID-19 protective behaviors. Number 3. Protective Measures to Stay Safe During End-of-Year Celebrations. Gatherings should not take place unless basic precautionary measures are applied and adhered to by all attendees. Here are the protective measures should be applied by everyone, irrespective of their COVID-19 vaccination status. Stay at home if you feel unwell or have COVID-19 symptoms. Keep a physical distance of at least one meter from others. Open windows to improve ventilation. Cough or sneeze into a bent elbow or tissue. 
Wash hands frequently. When indoors, avoid crowded or poorly ventilated areas. Follow the advice on masks. Number 4. Precautionary measures should be applied for small and large events. First, precautionary measures should be implemented for gatherings of any size, even small private events and celebrations. The precautions include hosting events such as in well-ventilated areas. All attendees should follow advice on wearing masks, keeping at least one meter distance from others, coughing or sneezing into a bent elbow or tissue, washing their hands frequently. Second, anyone showing symptoms of SARS-CoV-2 infection should stay at home. Third, even with precautionary measures in place, zero risk does not exist. And fourth, if appropriate measures can't be taken, postponing or canceling events of any size should always be a consideration to protect the health and well-being of attendees and their communities. Number 5. Consider virtual alternatives to celebrate together. Many of us may need to travel to reach our loved ones. Consider all related risks and ask yourself, do I really need to travel? First, traveling may increase the risk of exposure and transmission of SARS-CoV-2. Second, consider all travel-related risks. Precautionary measures should be strictly followed when traveling. Third, persons who have not been fully vaccinated or do not have proof of previous SARS-CoV-2 infection and are at increased risk of developing severe disease, including people 60 years of age or older, or those with comorbidities, should be advised to postpone travel to areas with community transmission. And fourth, virtual alternatives can be considered instead of physical meetings to take part in celebrations. Please, consider taking part in celebrations virtually, or just with the people you live with. These are the safest options as they minimize chances of spreading the virus. Number 6. Additional resources. There are several additional resources that we are able to get further information as following links. 1. Small public gatherings on holidays and COVID-19. 2. Key planning recommendations for mass gatherings in the context of COVID-19. 3. COVID-19 risk assessment tool. 4. Holding gatherings during the COVID-19 pandemic, WHO, policy brief. And 5. WHO, advice for international travel in relation to the SARS-CoV-2 Omicron variant. Number 7. COVID-19 Protective Measures. WHO, has defined the following COVID-19 protective measurements to put into practice, in order to protect yourself and others. 1. Keep you distance. 2. Wash your hands frequently. 3. Cough and sneeze into your elbow. 4. Ventilator open windows. 5. Wear a mask. And 6. Get vaccinated when it is your turn. That's all now. What do you find this video interesting so far? Please, tell us in the comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button and ring the notification bell, if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching this video from the beginning to end. Stay healthy.